Hello friends, in this video, I, Dr. Sandeep Kumar Goyal, will explain you the concepts and applications of simple interest and compound interest, which are part of mathematics of finance chapter. Now coming to concept of simple interest, as you know, simple interest is the interest which is charged on original principal for each period. So in case of simple interest, the interest which you get for each period remains same. Now the formula for computation of simple interest is I equals to PRT where I is simple interest in rupees, P is principal in rupees, R is rate of interest and T is time in years. When you use simple interest, you can also find out sum or amount denoted by S where S is equal to P plus I. When you put I is equal to PRT here, you get S is equal to P into 1 plus RT. So this is the formula for finding sum or amount using simple interest. Now let us take an example. Find the simple interest and amount on rupees 5000 for 3 years at 4% interest per annum. Here in this example, you are given P equals to 5000, R is 4% means 4 divided by 100 that comes to 0 0.04. So you use R is equal to 0 0.04 and T is equal to 3. Now you can compute simple interest using I equals to PRT. So I is equal to 5000 into 0 0.04 into 3 that comes to rupees 600. Now you can find out amount by using S is equal to P plus I. So S is equal to 5000 plus 600 that comes to rupees 5600. Now let us take another example. A saving account opened 3 months ago now has a balance of rupees 2040. If the bank pays 8% simple interest, find how much money was deposited. Here in this case, you are not given principal. So assume money deposited B rupees P. You are given S is equal to 2040, R is equal to 0 0.08 and T is equal to 3 divided by 12 that comes to 0 0.25. The time period is given as 3 months which is converted into year by dividing it by 12. So T is equal to 3 by 12 here. Now you can compute P using S is equal to P into 1 plus RT. So you have 2040 is equal to P into 1 plus 0 0.08 into 0 0.25. When you solve this equation further, you get P is equal to rupees 2000. Now coming to the concept of compound interest. Compound interest is the interest which is charged on original principal plus accumulated interest. In case of compound interest, the interest which you get period after period keeps on increasing because there is interest on principal as well as on interest. In case of compound interest, you can find out compound amount S by using the formula S is equal to P into 1 plus I raised to power N, where P is principal, I is rate of interest per compounding period and N is the number of compounding periods. This formula can also be rewritten as S is equal to P into 1 plus R divided by M raised to power MT, where M is the number of compoundings in a year, R is the interest rate per annum compounded M times during the year and T is the number of years. So, so I becomes R upon M here and N becomes M into T here. When you have a case of quarterly compounding, M is equal to 4. When you have a case of semi-annual compounding, M is equal to 2. And when you have a case of monthly compounding, M is equal to 12. Now let us take an example. Find the compound amount and compound interest of rupees 7000 invested for 15 years at 8% compounded semi-annually. Here in this case, you have P is equal to 7000, N is equal to 2 into 15 that comes to 30. 2 is here 
m that is because of semi annual compounding there are two compoundings in a year and 15 years time period is mentioned i is rate of interest that is 0.08 divided by 2 that comes to 0.04 8 percent per annum is divided by 2 because there are two compoundings in a year so 0.04 percent is the rate of interest per compounding period here now you can compute compound amount as using the formula s is equal to p into 1 plus i raised to power n so s is equal to 7000 into 1 plus 0 0.04 raised to power 30 that comes to 7000 into 1.04 raised to power 30 this 1.04 raised to power 30 you can compute either from calculator or you can use compound interest table for this and the value of 1.04 raised to power 30 you get as 3.243397 when you use this value you can find out s is equal to rupees 22703 0.78 now after finding this compound amount you can find out compound interest by deducting principal from the compound amount compound interest is equal to 22703.78 minus 7000 that comes to rupees 15703.78 now let us take another example the difference between the amount at 8% per annum compounded quarterly and compounded semi-annually for 2 years is rupees 36. Find the principal. In this example, you are not given principal. So, let the principal be rupees P. You can compute the amount of principal P at the end of 2 years at the rate of 8% per annum compounded quarterly as p into 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 raised to power 4 into 2. When you solve it further, you get p into 1.1716. Here you have divided rate of interest by 4 and you have multiplied time period of 2 years by 4 because it is a case of quarterly compounding. Similarly, you can find out amount of principal p at the end of 2 years at 8% per annum compounded semi-annually as p into 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 2 raised to power 2 into 2 that comes to p into 1.1698 now according to question p into 1.1716 minus p into 1.1698 is equal to 36 when you solve this equation further you get p is equal to rupees 20000 now coming to the case when the interest is compounded continuously continuous compounding means there are infinite number of compoundings in a year in this case you can find out compound amount s by the formula s is equal to p into e raised to power rt where r is the rate of interest compounded continuously and t is the time period in years let us take an example a person deposits rupees 5000 in a bank which pays an interest of 11 percent per annum compounded continuously how much amount will be in his account after 10 years here in this example you have p is equal to 5000 r is equal to 0 0.11 and t is equal to 10 now you can compute compound amount s using the formula s is equal to p into e raised to power rt so s is equal to 5000 into e raised to power 0 0.11 into 10 so s is equal to 5000 into e raised to power 1.1 the value of e raised to power 1.1 you can find out from ex table and you get its value as 3.0042 when you use this value you can get s is equal to rupees 15021 if you do not use ex table you can also solve the equation s is equal to 5000 into e raised to power 1.1 by taking logarithm on both sides then you get log s is equal to log 5000 plus log e raised to power 1.1 here you have used the formula 
log m into n is equal to log m plus log n on the right right hand side of the equation now this equation further becomes log s is equal to log 5000 plus 1.1 1 .1 into log e here you have used the formula log m raised to power n is equal to n log m this equation when you solve further by referring log tables you get log s is equal to 3.6990 plus 1.1 1 .1 into 0 0.4343 so you get log s is equal to 4.1767 and when you take anti log of 4.1767 you get s is equal to rupees 15021 now let us take another example which has the case of interest changing in different periods so in this example mr x deposited rupees 10000 in a bank for 3 years offering interest at the rate of 10% compounded quarterly during first year at the rate of 12% compounded semi annually during second year and at 3% compounded annually during third year find his balance after 3 years and total interest earned here in this example you can find out the required balance after 3 years using the formula s is equal to p into 1 plus r divided by m raised to power mt so s is equal to 10000 into 1 plus 0 0.10 divided by 4 raised to power 4 into 1 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.12 divided by 2 raised to power 2 into 1 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 1 raised to power 1 into 1 here in this equation you can see in the first bracket m is 4 in the second bracket m is 2 and in the third bracket m is 1 because for the first year the quarterly compounding is there for the second year semi annual compounding is there and for the third year the annual compounding is there similarly in the powers of each of these brackets the multiplications has been done now one more thing you can see in the power of first bracket 4 into 1 here 1 is basically time period of one year which denotes first year in the second bracket the power 2 into 1 here 1 is period of one year which denotes second year and in the third bracket the power is 1 into 1 here the second one which represent the period of one year which is basically third year in this equation when you multiply 10,000 by the resultant figure of the first bracket you get sum after first year which becomes principal for the second year when you multiply 10,000 by the resulting figures of first two brackets then you get sum after second year that becomes principal for the third year and when you completely solve this equation you get s is equal to rupees 12774.36 that is sum after three years after computing sum after three years you can also find out total interest earned by deducting the principal from the balance computed above so total interest earned is equal to rupees 12774.36 minus 10000 that comes to rupees 2774.36 now after this video I think you must have understood the concept of simple interest, compound interest and their applications. In order to understand more topics on the chapter mathematics of finance please continue to watch my other videos. Thank you.